Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how to make a parent out of standalone listings on Amazon. So right now, um, we're working with these Nutro Chewy Dog Treats. It's in the pet supply category. You can see now that uh, we have a standalone page with a flavor of banana. And then over here, we have another standalone page um, with a flavor of apple. So what we want to do is just combine these two into a family so they exist on one page um, with different variations. So show you guys how to do that. What we're going to do is download a category specific flat file for the pet products and we're going to download the browse tree guide so that we can get the proper item type and then we're going to link everything together using the parentage section of the flat file. Um, we'll add some basic content to our new parent and we'll upload and we should be good to go from there. So you go into your seller central inventory and you go inventory add products via upload and you want to go to download an inventory file. So it's the first tab here. So you go inventory, add products via upload. And then from your download and inventory file, you come down to um, category specific inventory files and you click on that. And then it opens up this pop-up after you click on category specific inventory files. So we'll open up this pop-up and we're going to download our templates and our browse tree guide for pets. So you scroll down a little bit to the second chunk here where you have file templates and browse tree guides. So let's go down to pets and download this um, column right here for the file template. So pet supplies template and then we're also going to download the pet supplies, you scroll down to the browse tree guide. So the template was here, we're gonna go browse tree guide for pets. So right here, pet supplies BTG for browse tree, <laughs> browse tree guide. <laughs> so you download both of those. And um, we're just gonna open those up and populate them. So I'll show you what you need to have populated for a successful upload. All right, so I'll just walk you through this and show you where to get all the information. So column A needs to be populated. The first thing you're going to do is make up a parent SKU. So it's user created. It can be anything you want. So I thought neutral four pack parent is what we would call this. And then below that, you're going to list the SKUs that already exist. So these are the two SKUs that already exist in Seller Central, one for banana and one for apple. I just grabbed them from Seller Central and copied them right over. And then as you go over, you see here in column D, we have product name. You just need to put a title for the parent because that's the only new thing we're adding. These children already exist with titles, so they're okay. Pop in the brand name and manufacturer and E and F. It's oftentimes the same, but um, just include those two. In column G, we're going to put the product description. So, you know, you can get this from wherever you're getting your content from. It might be somewhere like this. It could be a Word doc, it could be from anywhere really. All right, so you got your description in. So you're just going through the flat file here. We're gonna do column H. You're gonna use this drop down to select pet supplies, and then you could drag it down for everything, just so all the children get it too. Same thing for item type keywords. So we need to populate this using the browse tree guide. So we're gonna reference the listing first and see where they exist. So you can see here that it's in pet supplies, dog treats, snacks. So we're gonna open up our browse tree guide and I'm just gonna control F for snacks. The first place it took me was to cat snacks. That's not really where I wanna be, so I'm gonna go to the next one. And this is more dogs, so dogs, um, snacks right here. So you see the keyword I need to use is right here. So it's pet-snack-treats. So I'm going to go ahead and enter that into the into the flat file. So pet slash snack slash treats. I just typed that in manually and then dragged it down for the children. Um, and then also note here that you also need to include a target audience as dogs in addition to the item type for this to work. So we're going to go back to the flat file. And just remember, we need to add a target audience of dogs. That's just a little bit farther over on the right. Um, but another thing you need to do here is for update delete, you need to update your parent SKU because this parent SKU doesn't exist in your inventory yet. So that is a full update. These children that already exist in your inventory, the banana and the apple, you're not going to do a full update on those. You just do a partial update. 
So for any SKU that's new, you do update, and for any SKU that already exists, you do partial update. Then we're going to keep going over. You can skip all this red stuff for now and all this shipping information, and um, you don't even need to enter any of the bullet points right now. Those are all tied to the children. What we do need is, like we talked about, this target audience. You need to select dogs from the dropdown so that it links your item type of pet snack treats to dogs so that it gets indexed properly. So that's all set. So you keep scrolling over the right. We can skip the images for now. We're just doing the bare minimum to get um, this family created. So this is the important section right here, parentage. So what you're going to do is just copy your parent SKU and paste it into column BX for each of your children. So you can paste your parent SKU and drag it down. So now you have a parent SKU listed for each of your lines um, for your children that exist. And then over here you designate each as a parent or a child. So you have parent for the top and then child for the next two. And that's just a drop down you can select and drag. Um, and then you come over here to relationship type. So you select variation from the drop down for the children only, not for the parent. And then you move over one more column to variation theme. Um, you look at the drop down and you see flavor. So we know we have flavors banana and apple. So you would select that for all. So in the parentage, you do parent for the parent and ch child for both children. Um, you don't assign a parent skew to the parent row and neither do you assign relationship type. So these two columns are left blank for the parent always. Um, and you fill out the variation theme for the parent and the children. So that will always look like that. And then you keep scrolling over. Since our variation theme is flavor, you know that when we get to flavor, we need to fill something out there. So banana and apple are the flavors that we're using. And besides that, we should be pretty much good to go. So this is the bare minimums. Um, we'll scroll back over and go over it one more time, but you need to, you know, identify your variation, whatever it is. So here it's flavor, banana, and apple, but say it was color, you would need to have your colors in these columns right here, or size perhaps, like so you have a color name or a size name, but in this case we're doing flavor. Um, so we're scrolling over. This is the parentage section, like we talked about. This is where everything gets tied together by parent skew. And then you're scrolling over. We skipped all the images stuff. Um, it was just important for us to identify the target audience here to make sure that it got linked right to our item type. So we did that and called it dogs. And then back towards the beginning we have the main stuff. So we did update for the parent SKU because it's brand new. And we did partial update for the kids because they already existed in our Seller Central inventory. Um, we did the item type keyword, pet snack treats, that we got from the browse tree guide. Um, pet supplies, we selected from the drop down and just applied that to all. We gave the new parent a title and a description. Um, and then, yeah, we made sure to identify the brand. Besides that, we don't need to fill anything else out to set the relationship between these two existing children and the new parent that we're creating. So all you have to do is save your file as an Excel is fine, and then go back to Seller Central and upload your file. So we're going to go to Add Products via Upload. You go Inventory, Add Products via Upload. Check and upload your inventory file. So you select Inventory for non-media file um, categories. That's the first selection. Choose your file. I think mine's actually here. So yeah. Flat File, Pet Supplies. And then you just upload. Make sure that you have Excel selected if that's the kind of file you're using. And from here, we're just going to wait a few minutes and check back and hope that we get a successful upload. All right, so um, our upload went through, and you can see here at our um, the top results, um, three records were processed, three successful. We got one warning. I think it was, um, let's see what it is. I think probably that we're missing an image or something. But you can see, you'll see that it doesn't prevent your upload from going through, so no worries there. So, yeah, it's just saying, you know, you haven't yet entered a main image or bullet points, but we didn't get any errors, so it should be successful. So let's go to our inventory 
and it should be right here at the top. So you'll see our new parent with two variations. So it's this, uh, you know, bundle of four pack of chewy treats and, you know, we'll click the link and you see the two variations in one. So now we have apple and banana all together on one page where they used to be standalone like this. So now they exist together. So that is the process for, you know, um, making a parent, making a parent skew, creating a parent ASIN, and, you know, making a family out of listings that were previously standalone in your inventory. You can do this for, for any product as long as you have a SKU and, you know, just pay attention to the little differences like item types and product types and variation themes and, um, you know, pay, read your error messages and troubleshoot accordingly, but you should be able to create all sorts of fun pages with different variations using this process. So I hope that was helpful and good luck and talk to you next time.